Ben Puck of Puck Custom Enterprises, and you're going to tell us about the boat. This is a project that we started in uh, on in about 2001. We actually tried several different devices because we were struggling at a large lagoon that we, uh, a dairy lagoon that we had down in uh, southern Iowa, and uh, the art of using three tractors and lagoon pumps were not cleaning the lagoon out because the size and mass of these lagoons have gotten to the point where they're hundreds of feet wide and hundreds and hundreds of feet much longer you know, in a rectangle. And what we found is that the zone of influence of our lagoon pumps did a very, very good job within probably 60, 70 feet of the shore or wherever we could, we could manipulate it. And so with failing to get the center of that lagoon up into the water, the, the, the freer water at the top, was something we always struggled with. And, and positioning the pumps around that lagoon was, was a little tenuous. And it took a lot of, lot of, lot of uh, time to, to move uh, the pumps around. And, and find that spot. Plus I had to have three tractors, three lagoon pumps. We were burning anywhere from probably eight to 12 gallons of diesel fuel an hour, depending on which pump it was. Um, the more energy we were putting into the, the, the lagoon we found, we were getting a lot more um, solids uh, mm -hmm. remediation out of, the, out of the lagoon. The funny thing was, is that the lagoon pumps, we ascertained, figured out that they really weren't doing very much for us as far as pressure. And pressure is what we needed to basically bring the solids up off the bottom and training the, the liquid into the bottom of that lagoon. And we didn't have enough energy to, to do that. If I could find a more efficient pump um, and I put the put smaller amount of energy to it or the same amount of energy in it, I get more energy into the water. Mm -hmm. So the next thing was is to try to take that energy, place it in the water above if we could float something out, out of, above the solids, I would only have to pay it, penetrate the depth of the liquid, which would be some, say, arguably 15 to 20 feet deep. And if I could find a way to get the energy pencil pointed over the top of that and be, be random in the way it happens, I could get the solids up off the bottom, get them, get them suspended vertically into that, into that uh, liquid mass and have a more consistent product which is the nutrient to grow their next crop. So the boat takes one big pump and uses that both to, to take the liquid out of the, the pond, redistribute it in the pond and agitate, and it also uses it to maneuver around the pond. So yep. you have one pump that does it all. Yep, and, and so we, we, manip we manipulate the boat in the water or in the pond by the back two guns, by providing thrust off forward and backward. Mm -hmm. We actually use the front gun to steer the boat uh, we can actually use the front gun and sever it from the back two guns via the gate that we can run, run remote controlly, and we can actually bring that front nozzle, which is a four inch in diameter, up to 90 pounds of pressure. That gets us good velocity to be able to hit the, toward the bottom of the, of the pond. As the pond goes down, we can open up more guns and have less and, pressure, and have less pressure but we're actually increasing the flow because of the per the, 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 the curve of the pump. So, and then also the, the the boat agitates, it maneuvers, and also you can pump a distance to your to wherever you want to apply. Yep. All we've with got, the same pump. We've got customers that use it to load wagons, mm -hmm. and we can go back to using the back two guns in, in, in lieu of the very front cannon that's hooked up to the hose to load the load stand. Um, so they can switch back and forth, or they can run them simultaneously, but they can speed up the flow, obviously, by closing off the back two guns. About how, how much volume can you move? We can move about 4,500 gallons a minute in a short distance, and that would be up to about 120 foot ahead, okay. or 35, 40 pounds of pressure. Mm -hmm. We can also uh, hook this up to, like say, a drag hose or a main line. Now we can run we can run actually three three pieces of eight inch hose out, uh, which is be three eighths of a mile, to a jump pump, and we can run 2,500 gallons a minute off the very same platform. Mm -hmm. Or we can run continuously with say eight inch hose up to a mile, pulling two five inch drag hoses, and because the friction loss of the drag hoses and the and the main line equal the curve of the pump, we can flow about 1,450 gallons a minute to the field. Okay. And we actually have an, an option to where you can run the, the boat completely and totally from the tractor cab of the tractor. Right. We can start it up, shut it down, open gates, and it's all fed back via 
uh, light speed and, and this allows the bump to be very, very versatile. And it is also a remote control at Pond right. on it with, a, with a ScanRico uh, right. uh, uh, belly pack. And so this thing, uh, the back one, can actually turn in, upside down more or less and go in reverse. And yep, yep. We actually swing that about 90 degrees. So we've got a 45 degree downward uh, push on it. And so when we bring it up to shore, we want to push against the shore, we can shut the front gate off and, and supply about 60 pounds of nozzle pressure off the back two guns to continue to agitate as what a lagoon pump would do. And how do you get this in and out of a lagoon? We, we back it up, um, back it up, set it on the ground, and we slide it in with, say, a payloader or, or, or a front-end tractor loader, mm -hmm. as well as uh, could use a three-point hitch, you know, the quick hitch, mm -hmm. to slide it in and retrieve it back out with the same way. And we, we like using the, the, the three-point on the tractor, and we like using a, a payloader that most dairies have. And it weighs about 10,000 pounds. Uh, with the diesel fuel, it carries about 120 gallons of diesel fuel. And so if I'm using it as an agitator, I've got enough run time for about somewhere between 15 and 18 hours, depending on the thickness of the manure and the requirement of the engine. If I'm using it as a lead pump, I've got enough uh, for about a 10 hour day uh, because the motor's gonna work a lot harder making higher head pressure. And the flotation units fold up so that you can take it down the road. We actually in a fold this. Trailer. Yep, this this actually folds up to 98 inches. It's on a 102 wide trailer. I can pull it with three quarter ton pickup. The basically the communication unit and the antenna on the very front of the boat. We uh, we run that with. Uh, of course, that can be hooked up to uh, the Guardian. Uh, it's actually light speed, mm -hmm. and you can actually run that same uh, set of electronics by just simply plugging and playing a modem if you want to run it from like cell phone hmm. based technology. Other than that we have a shore to, shore to uh, boat technology which is using a scan Rico uh, remote control mm -hmm. that will give you the feedback on now this this type of boat uh, will give you the feedback of engine RPM, temperature, oil, uh, location of the boat in the pond if you choose to GPS it because we have that option as well. We have uh, the ability to start and stop it, turn the lights on, basically run all functions except fold the wings up because we don't want someone to fold the wings up. up while it's floating. That would be a bad thing. It would be definitely bad. Well, Ben, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very, very much. Okay.